Today I want to show you in this quick video how to just polish your research paper so that it, in, it includes all of the necessary components, all of the um, required chapters or sections that all good research projects need to have. So the first one, we're going to look at your title page. This basically any report or project that you do in college should have a title page. I also want to look at the different sections. And so we'll get down into the, to the nitty gritty of this shortly. As far as the title page, one of the things that I always do when I do any type of paper for college is to pull up the APA sample paper by Purdue Owl. If you just Google that, APA sample paper Purdue Owl, then it will bring up the um, version six and the version seven, APA edition version six and seven sample papers. And I like to bring them both up right now because we're in this transition period and some classes will allow you to use six, some will allow you to use seven, uh, some don't care yet. So it just gives you a good example of what's changed and how you can update your paper accordingly. So for our title page, you'll see that when we used version six, it had a running head, it had a page number, nothing here was bolded, and it had an author's note. Version seven is pretty different. There is not a running head. It does have a page number. The title is in bold, and it does not have an author's note. You'll notice down here, student papers do not contain an author's note. So use this as a guide as to what your title page should be. I also use this to look at different uh, parts of the paper because, again, every research paper should be very similar in the layout. So you'll have an abstract. In version six, the abstract was not bolded. It is in version seven. The, um, in both editions, the, the abstract is not indented. Um, so you just start uh, at your margin here. And then version six, they wanted your abstract to be between 150 and 250 words. You always have your keywords. Version seven says that there's really not a, uh, a specific number of words, but they still think it should be uh, no more than 250 words. Now, depending on what you're writing, sometimes they will tell you it could be 300 words. So just look at the assignment that you're working on to see if there is a specific number of words for the abstract. Also include your keywords. I like toggling between these two uh, pa sample papers too because it gives you a little bit of different information. Here this tells you more about keywords. What are they? They're important ideas or subjects in your paper. It doesn't really tell you though in version 7 really what the abstract is. Um, it tells you how to set it up. It doesn't really tell you exactly what the abstract is. In version six, it tells you that the abstract is a brief summary of the paper, allowing readers to quickly review the main points and purpose of the paper. So that's why I like to go back and forth between the two. In, uh, in a nutshell, the abstract should be a synopsis of the entire paper, all within 250 words. <laughs> so what did you do? Why did you do it? Uh, how did you do it? And what were your findings? All of that should be in the abstract. You could also include uh, what could the reader do with this? Are there practical or theoretical implications? What could they do with this information? The abstract is usually the piece of the paper that people will read to decide if they want to read the rest of the paper. So you want this to be short and sweet and very to the point. Okay, then we go on down into uh, more of the paper. So now I'm going to switch over to my sample paper so that we can show you how to set it up with headings and a table of content. Now you'll see if you go up here in Microsoft Word in your toolbar and you go to find, this is a great way to see if there are um, sections already in here if there are headings. These headings are very important because they tell us what the um, what the paper is and how to navigate through the paper. Now I'm going to get rid of all these headings 
just for the sake of the paper so I can show you how to set them up. <laughs> All right, so if you have a paper that is similar to this and you wanna get rid of everything, you can just go to normal and now there isn't anything. Um, we've already talked about the title page, so I'm gonna get rid of that just for the sake of getting rid of things, cleaning things up a bit. Now we need to have the abstract in here. So again, in the abstract, we're looking at um, usually no more than 250 words to explain what the paper is about. It's the who, what, when, where, and how of the paper, okay? And we don't indent that, so we're going to scoot that a little bit over. All right, but notice in the headings here, nothing is populated. To make it easy, we want to go up here and tell it that this is heading one. Now, sometimes when you do this, it will turn this blue and it will change the, uh, the font and the size and all of that stuff. So there are ways to go in and, uh, and change that to make it you know, very uniform so that you don't have to continuously change this. But for the sake of getting through this video pretty quickly, let's just, we could highlight it, change it to Times New Roman 12, black font, bold it, change your color here to black, and uh, we're on our way. Now the introduction, we wanna do the same. Notice how it's starting to populate over here. So these are our headings. After the introduction, we should have a literature review. And like I said, these are the same, um, the same sections that all research papers should have. And you'll notice if we don't have these headings, it's difficult to figure out where in the paper these items are. So literature re review is there. The next one that we're gonna look for is the method section. And we want to change the method section to have a heading. We also want to see the results section and make sure it has a heading. And the discussion section needs to be a heading. And then references. So at a bare minimum, and that should be on its own page, at a bare minimum, your research paper should have these headings. Abstract, introduction, literature review, method, results, discussion, and references. All research projects, all dissertations should have these headings. <laughs> okay, now if we wanna get even more fancy with this, you could go in and you could um, look at your figures and tables. So to do that, you go into references and we want to insert a caption. So we're gonna say this is figure one, and it gets kind of messy right here, but then you're gonna just rename it. Okay. And um, clean it up a bit. We don't need this. Okay. Then we wanna change our Font, make sure everything aligns. Okay, and this is gonna be, notice how that figure one, the one itself, has an extra highlight. I'm gonna show you what happens here in just a minute. We could go on down and find other tables and whatnot. So here we have a table. Um, we probably have tables before this. Maybe table one. Okay, so here we have table one, and we wanna do the same thing. So go to references, go over here to where it says tables and figures, insert a caption, and we're gonna call this an example of a table. Okay, then again, we just wanna make sure all of our font in the paper is Times New Roman 12 point font. Okay, so, oops, that actually says, Figure, so we don't want that to be a figure. We want it to be a table. So go back to references, insert caption. Notice here it has a label for figure or table. We need to toggle between the two. So now it's a table. <laughs> and we'll go back to 
Times New Roman, 12-point font. Okay, now the, the other piece that I want to show you here is you can add subsections. Um, so let's, here we are in the introduction. If we wanted to add a subsection, we could change like this one here to heading two. So you have headings one, two, and three. That's usually right there in your style on your uh, toolbar. So here's heading two. Notice how it pops right there under introduction. And here's heading three, if you wanna do that one. So whatever makes sense for your paper is how you can organize that. But at a minimum, we wanna have these sections. You have your abstract, the five sections of the research paper, and the reference page. Now, to add your table of contents, we're gonna come up to the top here and go into uh, references. We're gonna add the table of contents. So you can pick how you want this to look. Um, either it says table of contents or contents, however you want it to look. And notice what happens. It automatically adds everything that we had over here. And if we decided to go in and keep working on the paper and change things around and maybe the page numbers get out of whack, you don't manually fix this. You just come in here and you tell it to update the table. You can either update page number only or the entire table, and that will fix it. If I'm adding more headings and uh, whatnot to the table, you wanna make sure you do update the entire table to bring in those extra headings. But what about the table and figure that we had? Well, that's a separate piece to the table of contents. So you wanna say insert table of figures here and say okay. Now it's gonna bring in those tables that we looked at. So this gives us the option to also have tables and figures and images and all sorts of things, but they're down here in the, uh, in the bottom part of the table of contents. Again, just make sure that you've got this as Times New Roman, 12 point font, and we want the, the font to be blue or uh, black, and then the table of contents, you might want it bold. Um, again, I'd go back to the sample papers to see what is the uh, protocol these days <laughs> with the table of contents for, um, for the APA sample papers. Some of them, like I said, will be uh, different depending on if you're using the sixth edition versus the seventh edition. All right, so that's what we have. And if you have any questions, I'd love to know, but this is a quick video about the basics for your research paper. Again, it should have the abstract. These five sections are consistent in all research papers and your reference page. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.